live. Honestly, I've been getting so many questions down in the comments to give a tour of our quail housing, how we keep our quail. I'm going to call it our quail coop for today. And one of the most important aspects is actually outside of the coop where I'm standing in front of right now. So we actually have a old horse barn that we did turn one of our horse stalls into a chicken coop. So that is the indoor section right here. And then we also have a nice chicken outdoor run out here, which you can see. Now this is actually gated in. So it's really nice because at night we'll close this up. And then if we aren't home, we will also close this up. So everything is pretty safe in there. It's really safe from predators. And inside of that run is where we actually keep our quail. We have caternic quail. So they're really hardy birds and they can withstand really cold temperatures up here in the Northeast. We're in around a zone seven gardening and in the Northeast of the US. And I definitely suggest looking into your area and picking a breed that's gonna be the best for your location, but you can definitely keep them out in a colder temperature. And that is what we do here, mostly because quail are really stinky and smelly and I would not wanna have them inside of my house. Um, we have had them inside of the barn and it's just not well ventilated enough. So. We decided to move them outside into a setup that we have that we are going to tour in just a bit. But again, they're kind of lifted above here. So let's go inside of the run and we'll talk a little bit more about it. We are now inside of the chicken run here and you can see behind me, I have this lifted box. It's probably around four foot off the ground. So the chicken cannot directly get up there. There are some roosting bars on the top over here that they can kind of go in, but they live pretty well with our quail. I definitely suggest putting in barriers for your larger birds from the quail. I have heard stories where turkeys and chickens will kind of get to quail. So we like to keep them boxed in. But what's really nice about this setup is we've kind of created an ecosystem where these animals can live together. So we will feed and water our quail up here and then everything will drop down into the bottom. There's grates down here that will drop down and all these droppings will get down into the chicken section, which they, they can scratch into. What's nice about this is we do have our feeder. We have an automatic feeder so this is like really nice because we can fill it up with a large amount of feed. And then we also have a green larger feeder inside for additional feed. We also have a watering system in here. But if you have raised quail before, you know that quail are really dirty, messy eaters and they will actually drop a significant amount of their feed. So what's really nice about this is instead of wasting that feed by letting it drop through, it drops down and then our chickens and guinea fowl will be able to eat it down here as well. So that food really isn't put to waste. It's more cycled out. All of their droppings will also drop down here. Those are the guinea fowl you can hear it in the background. There's probably a delivery coming or something. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. That was our guinea fowl. We are good now though. Um, but yeah, so Basically, we have all of our food in this upper section here. This is the outdoor section here. So there's a lot of really great ventilation inside of here. And then we have the indoor section, which is really protected from all of the outside elements. It can get in and out through a little tiny door, but it really locks them into a safe section that's really warm and cozy. We do either add some cardboard on the bottom or hay in order to keep it comfy and dry and really block a lot of the wind that could be coming up from the bottom. But we also have the top, which is completely covered. And then inside of our coop, we have this plastic liner here, which protects the whole run from getting wet, whether it be snow, rain, or any other elements. And then the sides are protected on the side of the quail coop in order to protect any other additional elements from like a sideways wind that could be coming in. So the really key elements for your coop is creating an area that's going to be safe from any large amounts of wind as well as any water. You want to make sure that your quail are both dry and able to escape windy areas because a harsh draft is going to be quite frigid for a little tiny quail, especially in the winter or just on a really windy cold night, even if it is in the summer. So let's actually go inside the coop now. So what I'm running 
standing in front of right now is literally just the most random box that we found on a recycle day um, and we turned it into a quail home. So we did this by adding some um, these actually were here, they were like grates on here, but we did cover up some of the holes here. So there is that safety section and I'll kind of give you a little tour of what it looks like right now inside. A lot of the quail kind of hang out in here, especially at night and they tend to lay a lot of their eggs in here as well. We've created a top layer of plastic wrapping here just in case an additional layer to help keep offset any of the rain that we have going on and we've closed off all of the sides. There's then an opening that allows the quail to go into the outdoor section. This allows for a lot of ventilation within the coop, and it also allows them to get any food, water, and just hang out in the outdoor elements. I find that even in the harshness of winter, a lot of quail will be out there hanging out. And honestly, this is really <laughs> the whole tour of our quail coop. But let's go outside and talk a little bit about what we're planning on a new iteration as we go into some of the warmer months. If you've been following our channel for some time, you've probably noticed that we have actually switched our quail cage. Previously, we were using a hatching time cage, and these cages are honestly amazing. They're really great in the summer, and they allow for your quails to be outside and really create a completely automated system. But in the winter, a lot of the water features do freeze up, which makes it really hard to to continue to care for your quail in this system. And hence why we moved over to this winter system. We really like it and we've had a lot of great success with it. So we are planning to actually keep it for the summer as well and test it out to see how it goes with some of the egg laying because we won't have that drop feature that we do have with the hatching time cages. And depending on how large we actually grow our quail flock, we might actually end up using both the cages and be able to do like a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, one thing that we are planning to do with this cage come a little bit warmer months is adding some more automation. We want to really add it so that it's more of a one time a week fill up that we really need to worry about. So if we do need to leave the house, we are expecting a little baby. So when we go to the hospital during that time, we don't want someone to have to come in here and feed and water our quail every day. So we're going to be looking to add an automated watering system as well as a much larger feeding system into this that is also going to be a lot more automated. Probably thinking about adding some really large like five gallon bins, maybe even larger depending on how large the flock ends up going. But automation is going to be key and we're looking to add as it gets a little bit warmer and we can start to add some of those elements without worrying about any freezing temperatures, destroying any of them as you can't use some of the tubing and functionalities within the colder months. But that's it. I hope this was helpful and I'd love to see some of your coop designs for your quail. So definitely share those down below. Definitely make sure to tag us on Instagram and share some of your designs as well. Otherwise, I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.